paper airplanes? Yeah, is that the right paper? Yes, you should have thought of that before you made that paper airplane. That is a really nice plane. You make that yourself? Uh-huh. We flew a paper airplane off. Did you just throw a paper airplane? National Paper Airplane Day. Enjoy yourself. Showtime. Wake up! <laughs> All right, National Paper Airplane Day, Doc. Yeah, you can't play that song from M.I.A., man. Oh, come on, man. You know why this, you can't play that particular song? Why? Because it's got the shotgun sound effects in it. Oh, yeah, well, that wouldn't be uh, politically correct right about Yeah, that. that's insensitive, man. Well, there is that. <laughs> it sounds like they didn't put them in there. They took them out. You know, and, and I... I'm not even going to go there today. <laughs> it's a great I, song, you though. Know, yes. You know what it's called? No. Paper Airplanes. <laughs> well, you know, at least they were original with the title. <laughs> so it seems fitting on, you know, Paper Airplane, National Airplane, Paper Airplane Day, that you would play Paper, Paper Airplanes, Airplanes by MIA. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> How's everything in Dockland? Uh, we good over here. We, uh, we, got, we got real. We had, we had real talk over here this morning. All right, and how'd that work out for you? A bunch of phone calls? No, I don't think anybody really cares, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, the right. AG touched a valid point, which was we really need to focus on mental health. And uh, I went on that and, and showed some examples and stuff. And, you know, we're just a small-town radio with a podcast on 104.5. Right. According yeah, yeah, to yeah. Camden News. Well, you know, I mean, you know, you, you got to be on the right station there, Doc. <laughs> it's so, you know, I mean, hey, I got a podcast. So, um, yeah. How'd that work out? I don't know. I guess we'll see how many people download it later. Okay. Maybe they'll just get bummed out and be like, oh, no, let's not listen to that show. Let's listen to that other show where he's, like, being stupid. Oh, well, that's pretty much anything that you're on, right? I know, but every time I get stupid on the radio, people download more. If I get, (laughs) if I'm serious. There is that, my friend. (laughs) If I'm having real talk, people are like, oh, this show sucks. I'm tuning out. Yeah, and I I have a certain (laughs) set of issues with that. It really does. It feels that way. The stupider I get, the more popular I am. Yes. And, 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 and people love the show. You know, I mean, and, and I really appreciate, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the, 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 the attention that way. But, you know, I mean, it should not only be the day that I screw up, okay? I mean, I mean, when they give tours here, I mean, people stand behind me, and, and Helen goes, wait, he's about to do something stupid. You, if you'll just be patient. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's when people want to tour. <laughs> baby, it ain't easy being cheesy, okay? <laughs> and that's when people will stop me at Walmart. Uh, that thing oh, yeah. we did on the show the other day, that was pretty stupid. That was pretty stupid. You're, you all right. You're an idiot. We love you. <laughs> God. But if I want to be serious, you know, want to have that real talk. Well, you, you weren't standing there with us when we were down at Blossom Festival and gave away the uh, Willie Nelson tickets and... Texas Ranger tickets and stuff like that, right? No, I was talking to Rick. Yeah, so, uh, you know, if you remember, I went on the air and I said, all right, the next person that comes up, first person that comes up and says, you guys are idiots, I got a pair of Willie Nelson tickets and we'll even throw in some Texas Ranger stuff. Oh, I bet, I bet you got it, what, in a fraction of a it, second? It didn't take five minutes. Yeah. Uh, it is very sweet lady comes walking up and says, you guys are idiots. I was like, <laughs> you win, okay? But if you yeah. said something like, hey, come up and tell us we're great, we're yeah, awesome. Yeah, you know, I mean, come up and you say hi. Let's uh, shake morning. hands, you know? Yeah, yeah, you guys are great. You know, anything like that. Yep. Yeah, no. crickets. Yep. Yep. yep, nobody's yep. showing up. That's, that's it. And we're standing there holding Jim Crack promotional items and waiting. Anyone? Anyone? Yep, yep, yep. And then I feel like when we end the show, it's like, well, I'd like to thank my one fan for coming so out today. So... <laughs> Uh, so so instead of having, you know, because, I mean, in our mind, we have this image that, that we're rock stars, right? And, you know, hordes yeah, of people well, are going to come know, out I mean, to the Yeah, road. exactly. Everybody listens, Because they right? want to touch us. They want to see us. Yes, I mean, we're us. popular. We're what's happening. But one person shows up. And so <laughs> thanks to my, I like to thank my one fan for coming out tonight. <laughs> and typically, you know who that one fan is? Why is it always some seven-year-old kid? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, we're. <laughs> We're big in uh, preschool, so, you know. God. We do love the children. We, we do love, we do the, love kids, the kids, but cheese so. and rice. Yeah, be, be nice if somebody over the age of 10, you know, came up and said, hey, y'all like you guys. You guys are all right. I listen to y'all every morning yeah. getting ready for school. 
good old days, you know. Well, I think I, they, they all got uh, a little freaked out, you know, when uh, we went on complaining about the guys coming up to us saying, hey, I'll listen to you every morning in the shower. Yeah. Because, yeah, that, you know, our response <laughs> to that was... <laughs> yeah. You know, so, uh, thank oh, you. Right. <laughs> thank you. So, uh, yeah. Ooh. Here's a bumper sticker. You know, uh, <laughs> that's when you throw the bumper sticker yeah, and make them know. go chase it. <laughs> you know, whoop! Win got it. <laughs> go get it. Go get it. It's time for the round table, South Arkansas, brought to you by Stories Floor and Carpet for a limited time. 2004 Lorraine out in El Dorado. The folks out of Stories Floor and Carpet are just the bee's knees. <laughs> How you like that one? Yeah, huh? yeah. The classic, bee's man. knees, yeah? The cla- huh? classic right there. Well, you know, you got to be uh, one of those guys. Yeah, don't bruise it. The bee's knees. They... All right. Yeah, don't, 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 don't bruise that one. That's, that's an oldie. Dependable service before and after the sale. You'll find that at Stories Floor and Carpet, 2004 Lorraine and El Dorado. Those are the people who got my boat carpet? Yes. Yeah, I love boat Six carpet. Six foot wide. I want some boat carpet. Cabin Rural Health Services over in Hampton, and they've got locations in Bearden, Hope, and a bunch of other places, too. Uh, learn more on their website, cabun.org, or call today, 870-798-4299. See what cabin can do for you everybody's antiques down in el dorado they got a bunch of antiques and gifts and collectibles and sports memorabilia they sell new tires trailers storage buildings they buy stuff too delivery services available 120 booths 31,000 square feet shop them online at everybody's antiques.com call them up 870-875-1444 we are brought to you by Mitch Lowe's Body Shop. Auto body and collision repair are just some of the things that they can handle over at Mitch Lowe's. They do framework, glasswork, refinishing, all accidents, large or small, Mitch Lowe's can handle it all. Located at 2025 California, you know, if you put it in the ditch, just call Mitch. Mitch Lowe's Body Shop, 837-2560. God, could she be more good, like a bull in a china shop? Good morning, Dr. Blood. You know, they don't know, Doc. That, that microphone's always hot, you know. So, right. Uh, yeah. I'm sound the like, sound quietest like person in the whole world. Ask Trent. When I wake up in the morning, he barely knows I'm awake. Except for that mic sound like somebody shoved that thing down a flight of stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Dr. Smith, we're brought to you by First Choice Family Care. 476 Hospital Drive right here in Camden. Become a new patient by going to the website, myfirstchoicecare.com. Get you a new patient packet. Fill that little booger out. Call them up, 870-800-9002. They'll set you up an appointment to uh, see the ever-illustrious Dr. Smith. And uh, she gets you fixed up, man. I'm telling you, she's pretty good at what she does. I don't know about them other doctors <laughs> out there. But Dr. Smith's all right. We have the best doctors in the whole U.S. right here in Washtenaw County. All right, uh, the cricket button wasn't working. Okay, OCMC's Chemical Dependency Unit, also a proud sponsor. They want me to remind you you're not alone. Addiction's a tough thing to get past. Make the choice to be a better you by calling 870-836-1289, 1-800-232-1289. Remember, all calls are confidential. St. John's Place, 1400 Highway 79, 167 Bypass in Fordyce, and Washington Nursing and Rehab, 1411 Country Club Road in Camden. Uh, reach St. John's Place by dialing 870-352-2104 or Washtenaw Nursing and Rehab locally here, 870-836-4111. SAU Tech, they got classes. They got class. Their classes have class. Check them out online, sautech.edu. They've got careers for you. Click on the Apply tab and fill out the job uh, thing for the one that's right for you. Go Rockets. And finally, by the Flaming Pig Barbecue. They're going to be set up at the Felsenthal Brim Festival. So uh, make your plans now. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Felsenthal Brim Festival. Uh, That's going to be going on Saturday. And I'm guessing they're going to be out there all day long. So you guys get ready. They are coming your way. All right, guys, guys. Um... Dr. Smith, good morning. Good morning. Is Doc out of Facebook jail? No, I'm back in it. How are you back in Facebook jail already? (sighs) Who won the bet? No, I don't know who won the bet, but did you realize that Facebook is anti-science? 
that does not surprise me. Did you know that if you say that a person is an animal, that's hate speech? That's interesting. Yes, because from what I was, you know, taught, the difference between us and animals is we can deny our instinct. They can't. Some of us, and sometimes, yeah, you know, some of us. But we're still animals. okay at it, and everyone does poorly at it at some but point. But according <laughs> to Facebook, see, if you take a person and you dehumanize them, and you relate them to animalistic characteristics, you know what? That's hate speech. You don't have to use Facebook. Like you don't have to utilize a business you don't like. Well, there is YouTube. There's lots of different options. And and there's the podcast. So they can have weird business requirements as to how they run their business, and you don't have to participate if you don't want to. That's true, but I didn't I didn't there realize I was going to get thrown in Facebook jail for saying that men are like dogs. Oh, that's hilarious. Who <laughs> hasn't said that? No, I'm <laughs> yeah, that's hate, but that is hate speech. But it's true. It probably is hate speech. It's just more ex- culturally acceptable because of sexism. Yeah, it really We can make fun of men because they're strong and they can handle it. But, uh-huh. but according to the FCC, <laughs> though, are really hurt I mean, see, feelings, the FCC has me under different strict guidelines to where I can, you know, I can cause the station to lose $150,000 for saying something that I shouldn't say. Whereas uh, Facebook, you, you just make a little joke there <laughs> and are like dogs and you're in Facebook jail. Wow. Facebook has more restrictions on me than the FCC does. <laughs> Yeah, well, nobody got, else no, really understands that. Sheila Nash of Magnolia was our the winner of our tickets for right. Willie Nelson and the Rangers. She said she doesn't think we're idiots. <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 well. She just thinks we're guys having fun. Well, thank you. God it, it's it's not like, idiots, it's dogs. There you go. The dog, yeah. that don't say dogs? that. Don't Who say that. Some people out? really like dogs. I'm a you know, I'm a big dog fan. So Dogs are loyal. You what well, much are loyal. There's it depends that. on the dog, and it depends on the person who owns that dog. Well, and it depends on what you put out on the porch, too. You got better food down the street. Guess where the dog's going? I don't know. And well, that was my point. they usually come back. That's <laughs> well, you know, they go and have a snack. <laughs> yeah, it's like they just you know my dog. I have a some sort of lab mutt mix, and uh, uh, my neighbors, the Lesters, he, my dog will come went and visited them first because their house is closest right and he tends to be out working with the moving trucks and stuff and so um the first time he did it he gave him a dog treat and so now as the second my dog gets away he's straight in his yard <laughs> well i know where the good stuff is treats. <laughs> <laughs> and he still comes back so he's still a very loyal dog but he also <laughs> understands where the dog treats are <laughs> <laughs> well, you stupid all right, guys, gals, uh, we do have to take a real quick break uh, as part of my continuing effort to keep your bills paid here. What, no, no, this isn't about bills. This is about kids. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, you know, our Camden Fairview valedictorian. And, Dr. Smith, you, you might know this young lady. All right. Here's Zoe Goss. Oh, Good evening, course. parents, faculty, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2022. My name is Zoe Goss, and it is an honor to be speaking for this class. I once heard of a famous Greek philosopher, Socrates, who lived long, long ago. He was intelligent, but he gave long speeches and his friends killed him. Since I am no Socrates, nor would I like to end up like him, I will try to keep this short. In a few moments, we will become Hamden Fairview graduates. Graduation marks the end of a chapter in our lives, but also the beginning of a new one. With this chapter closed, I'm certain we are all anxious about starting the next one, because unlike those textbooks we left stacked in a dusty corner, We cannot skip through the pages to see what comes next. We all have our own book of life that that we will continue to write each day that passes. Luckily, with what we have learned in the past 13 years, we have been given the pen and paper to write these next chapters. With the love and support of our families, friends, and fellow graduates, our stories will become bestsellers. Speaking of family, there are two people in my life who I can make my entire speech about, my parents. I am truly grateful for everything you've both done for me. There has never been a game where at least one of you wasn't there, nor has there been a day where I didn't think I could come straight to you both for help. To say that all of my high school years were improved because of your support is an understatement. To my mom, who gave me the brain, without you I would be even more a mini Ben than I already am. You have shown me cur- courage, compassion, and how to take the high road. Your daily lunch notes to me prove that the little things do matter. A sticky note a day actually kept that doctor very close to my heart. My dad, who you might not recognize without his overalls on, 
pushed me to my absolute limit. It is because of him that I am standing here today. He showed me to never do something just to get by. Do it your absolute best. Do it right or redo it. With his foot at my rear, I now never do anything that I cannot put all of my effort toward. And I can't forget my sister, who will always tell me the truth and is most definitely sitting in those stands right now wearing all of my clothes. Without her, I would not have been taught patience, because let me tell you, you have to have some to know that girl. All that to say, she has a heart of gold and would do anything if I asked her to. But I can't stop there. As most of you know, I was diagnosed with stage 4 high-risk neuroblastoma when I was 4 years old. As soon as I stepped out of the hospital, I was ready to be in the classroom, to be with my classmates who I would spend almost every day with for the next 13 years. Still frail, I couldn't quite yet go to school. Over the next few weeks, Mrs. Gilbert came to my house to teach me before I could go to real school. With peach fuzz still on my head, I finally entered the rocket room and took off from there. Here, I met one of my best friends, Joey Hobby, who shaved his head in order to not make me feel left out. As a cancer survivor, I have faced a few extra hardships in my education. You can ask each person sitting behind me, and I promise to all tell you that I cannot hear. I think I've said what or huh more times in my 17 years than most people say in their entire life. Once in a volleyball game sophomore year, I dove for a ball. Yeah, I got on the ground. Turns out the whistle had been blown and the play was over, so no wonder everyone was standing around. Thanks, Biscuit, for helping me walk that off. But I persevered through these hardships, and here I stand as valedictorian. Surviving cancer has also taught me that none of us get out of life alive, so be great, be gracious, and be grateful for every opportunity you have. Dr. Seuss once said, Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know, and you are the guy who'll decide where to go. We have had an up and down high school experience due to COVID. Although Mother Nature tried to get in the way, we had homecoming, we got to dance at prom, and here we stand at graduation. We can't forget the dodgeball tournament where the senior class, aka the best class, won. All thanks to Logan and Joey. As we graduate, it is now time for us to begin that new chapter. This chapter will be full of challenges, but I promise you we will get through them. And for that, we all deserve a round of applause. Thank you. Good morning, South Arkansas. It's time for the Washita River Report for Thursday, May 26th. In Camden, a flood warning is in effect. The river is expected to begin rising this morning. It's going to rise above flood stage late Friday evening and continue to rise to 26 and a half feet early Sunday morning. It will then fall below flood stage early Monday morning. The current gauge reading is 22.62 feet. Flood stage is 26 feet. Flood warnings also in effect for Thatcher Lock and Dam area. The river there is expected to rise to a crest of 80.9 feet early Monday morning. Currently, the gauge reading is 79.94 feet. Flood stage is 79 feet. And finally, at Morro Bay State Park, the gauge reading is 77.2 feet. Flood stage is 82 feet. Reliability of this forecast is based on current forecast of river and weather conditions from the National Weather Service in Little Rock. You guys have a great weekend and be safe. And we're back on the round table. Thank you guys for chiming in on Messenger. Uh, we are getting a bunch of great responses, Doc. And uh, yeah, apparently we're idiots, but they like it. Whoa, Doc. Sorry, I had to plug yeah. myself back in. <laughs> yeah. See? I'm an idiot. Yeah. I forgot idiots. to plug myself back in. You don't need nothing but idiots. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, before we get off into all of the things that we need to get into, um, we want to start with an update on the COVID thing right quick because Dr. Smith is our county health officer, and uh, apparently some of you guys are, are just naughty. Uh. Yeah, I know this is exactly <laughs> what you wanted to talk about first, right? She's like, uh, she's like, doggone it, JJ. I, I, I uh, have to bring raise it Raise your hand if you're done with COVID. <laughs> ah, everybody, everybody, boy, I'm right? Say, I am so done, but is COVID done with us? Um, I wish I had a crystal ball that could tell us how things, um, there doesn't appear to be like a new 
variant, just the Omicron getting some people that it didn't get the last time. So I'm hoping this is going to be kind well, of a that, smaller. That's nice. I, I, I hate that I missed it last time. I know. So it's going to yeah, give you so another option. All right. You know? you know, as long as I can jump on the train. So I'm hoping that that earlier wave, because that early wave of Omicron was so big, you know, I'm hoping this is going to be like, there's not as many people that didn't get it last time. Um, and I will say that please, please, please consider vaccination. We're two years in at this point um, uh, from the first people being vaccinated. I didn't grow anything new, did you? Well, and I've kept, I keep hearing inaccurate information. I was just told by a patient this week that this person was advised by their doctor not to get the vaccine because they've had a severe allergy to the flu shot. And on further investigation, she had had Guillain-Barre to the flu shot. That is not a risk with the new mRNA vaccines. So if you've had Guillain-Barre, or if you believe you have a contraindication. I don't wear a beret anymore. <laughs> Guillain-Barre sucks, and I'm sorry if you've ever had it. Um, and it is associated with the flu shot. In all the studies, in all the millions of people that have had the mRNA vaccines, it is not associated with the mRNA vaccines. And so the only true contraindication to either the Pfizer or Moderna mRNA COVID vaccines are if you are allergic to Miralax. That white bottle with the purple top that you take whenever things start moving a little slowly. If you're allergic to that, don't take the shot. If it's a true allergy. If it made your stomach hurt, that's not an allergy. True allergy is you're having hives, it's getting hard to breathe, your throat is closing up. That's an allergy. And fortunately, Miralax is like ubiquitously safe. Like there's not many drugs like it that have so rare of a re reaction. So it's very, very rare to be allergic to that type of medicine if you've had a colonoscopy you've had a cousin of miralax that's what the colon prep is and if you've tolerated a colon prep or miralax or you're not sure you've never tried them it's so rare to have an allergy go get your shot because if you do have an allergy we make you wait for 15 minutes and we have everything on site to give you should you have an allergy it, it's not going to be something that creeps up on you no the first typically it's usually the first time is mild. The second time, if you're really developing like an anaphylactic type allergy, the first exposure that you develop that allergy will be fairly mild, but it will be hives and it will be hives away from the reaction site. So if you get stung by a red wasp in your arm and it leaves a big old boulder under there, that's a large local reaction. It does not mean that you have an allergy. It may hurt to the dickens. It may be swollen. It may last forever, but that is a local reaction. If you get a shot and your arm hurts where you got that shot and it gets red and ugly, see a doctor because anytime the skin breaks with the needle, it could have an infection. But you may just have, be having what's called a large local reaction. True allergy is going to be hives somewhere else. If you get a shot in your arm, the hives will be in your other arm or your leg or your trunk. Hives tend to come on the trunk. And so those are those big welts, right? And it's not on the extremity you got the exposure on. So if you get a fire ant bite and you get a big old, like my, I swell terrible, but I don't get welts other places, right? Right. If you have hives away from a site after a known exposure, then definitely talk to your doctor because you may be allergic to that exposure. It's the second exposure after you have those hives that's the deadly one. Because then your body's recognized that, and it's primed, and that immune system is ready to fight off whatever that was. And it could kill you in the process. <laughs> so, um, but that's, that's, not, that's not we're, what we're experiencing 99.999999% of the time. It's right? actually pretty shocking. The allergy rates to the mRNA vaccines is so low. And it's actually really reassuring because, like, that patient I was talking about can't have the flu shot. Right. Right. And so there's actually mRNA flu shots in the making. So this person may actually, due to the vaccine technology advancement, be able to get flu shots. And those flu shots may be more effective than past flu shots. <laughs> there so, you go. Good and better. So, um, but it, please, if you feel like you have a contraindication, unless it is an allergy to Miralax, talk to your doctor and if your doctor says that you have a contraindication and you're like but i don't have an allergy to miralax 
call we'll get a we'll second feel opinion. that yeah and we can feel that through the health department the, the vaccine the people in charge of vaccines at ocmc like anybody is willing to talk to you about this yeah and, and the last thing that anybody wants to do when they're giving you a vaccine is hurt you Right. Nobody wants you to have an allergy in their hands. Yeah, no I mean, one. They, they, I don't want to deal with it. That's a lot of paperwork. That's all. <laughs> ask you a bunch of questions. Okay, you <laughs> That's know. a lot of paperwork. That's a lot of treatment. You know, it's like, I want you to just get your shot and move on with life. I promise I don't want it to be complicated. <laughs> Nobody wants that complication. And we are seeing a slight uptick right yes. now. Yes. So um, I was trying to pull that up as of, um, it hasn't been updated today, but... Total cases in Arkansas up 2,000 from last week. 700 active cases. 33 more at Arkansans have died. And uh, hospitalizations up 16 across the state. So across the state, there's only 72 hospitalized and only three on ventilators. So the number on ventilators has gone down. That's and good I, news. That is good news. And I think part of that is that now people that are getting sick are more likely to have had at least one of the shots, the Johnson & Johnson, the, you know, they may not have got their boosters, but, hey, this is the time. <laughs> like, don't wait. The cases yeah. are back on the rise. <laughs> like, it's, it's just a matter of time before the weather turns south, and then you're even more susceptible. And so let's just be really careful out there. Wash your hands. Stay more than six foot. You know, stay back from other people. If you feel sick at all, wear a mask. Like, keeping your respiratory droplets in your face instead of someone else's Ooh. keeps <laughs> keeps you from sharing it right and it's kind of a i think it's kind of a thing because i never thought of sending my kid to school in a mask before but there are times that i'm not really sure if she's going to be sick or was this just a little cough and now i can put a mask on her if i'm not sure and then if we figure out that she is sick she hasn't been shedding that virus all over everyone right absolutely and so I've now kept maybe another child from being sick or their parents or grandparents. or And, and the kids are pretty resilient, okay, yeah. as, as far as this goes. It, most of them really aren't minding wearing a mask. I have a hard time getting my young grandson to take the dog off thing off. Mine would put it on in the car. Well, you know, and, and, it's like, yeah. we're just in the car, baby. You don't have to have it on yet. He, he comes back in the house, and he's got it up underneath his chin. I'm like, dude, you can... Throw it away now and you know, yeah. give you another one tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so right. just please be careful. If you think you may be sick, even if you don't think it's COVID, I will say that a lot of people that are, are getting COVID after vaccination, it's not severe. And so y you may think it's just allergies, but allergies don't set in on you in one day. It's a bad season. It should have already been getting worse, right? If all of a sudden you have allergies today, I'm here to tell you it is not allergies. It may not be COVID, but it is not allergies. There, there is definitely something else going on. And, right? and there's so many viruses going around right now. It's not any of these things are good for all of the viruses that are going around. You can make yourself and those you love a little safer this way. Right. So, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, and if you're not vaccinated, do the right thing. consider it. You know, yeah, absolutely. It's still free. It, yeah. And we're two years in. If there had been negative things again, oh, I didn't no. grow anything new. I wish I'd had that third eye. I really wanted you like know, some well, x-ray vision. I, I was hoping for it. Well, anyway. You know. <laughs> All right, guys and gals, we're, we're not going to, you know, just beat this into the ground because God we're, knows all, we're tired all tired of it. Of it. Uh, but it is important that we. And if you're tired of it and you haven't been vaccinated, go get vaccinated. Go get vaccinated like, know? please help everyone get this thing gone. Speaking of uh, helping needles? everyone. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, needles. <laughs> so the cuffs and hoses blood drive. You I'm know, sorry, can you say uh, that again? The cuffs and hoses <laughs> blood drive. I have been so <laughs> careful about this one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody's writing their own doggone joke about that one. But uh, the cuffs and hoses blood drive. We... Uh, went out and supported the popo last week right doc yeah and, and where did we go before we went to the blood drive do you remember uh we went to this uh office of some sort you, you, and well, it has this willow bird or something that like attacks people come through the door what <laughs> yeah there's a bird or something that was like swinging down on me or something. oh, oh yeah well that was that was god 
All right. You, you know, have not had anybody else complain about that. <laughs> maybe this bird just doesn't like tall people. You know, I mean, it, that maybe was God. All specific. right, that, that wasn't Doctor Smith. Okay, yeah, we had to go by Doctor Smith's office, right? That's so, what it uh, was. That office. Yeah, by I, the yeah. hospital. I I told my staff not to give you that letter because I didn't want you <laughs> donating blood to the police. What? And now we we've, we've got it confirmed. <laughs> yep. okay. Now Dana sent me a text and said, you know, when you go Friday for the for the fire department. She said you can tell them to put that on the police department's tab so they get credit for it. Yeah, I don't know that they're actually going to do that. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> yeah, there's some shenanigans. Know. There's some shady stuff going on because that's my job to report shady um, business. I'm going to want this vote <laughs> recounted. <laughs> <laughs> Giving the gift of life only takes <laughs> y'all. Y'all, they call me an idiot. <laughs> Giving the gift of life only takes a couple of minutes. Yeah. Now, for the clinical side of this, and, and I got something else I want to get to too. So we're going to be real quick about this. Cuffs and hoses, blood drive tomorrow. Hey, uh, and you know what the California. good thing is about donating blood? Hmm. I have That's people all the time wanting to know their blood type, and your insurance will not pay for me to test your blood type. <gasps> Will not. What? And I can tell you why. But the the so whenever you give blood, they will tell you They'll your blood you. type for free. They'll what? type you right there on the spot. Because they have to know your blood type. <laughs> they gotta and then they give you a card. They gotta write that letter. Because if on you're that O negative, you're gonna be getting a lot of emails, texts, hey, can you give blood again? <laughs> hey well, baby, what's I'm, up? How trust you doing? me, I'm the A negative and they're, yeah. they're all over Those me. Those special so, uh, blood types, yeah, you know. Yeah, they're hitting you up saying, Hey, you want a Netflix and donate? You know, uh, <laughs> hey man, you know, we're gonna hook you we up. We need a t shirt for that, that, Netflix and donate. <laughs> <laughs> I got a juice box for you. <laughs> Well, you know, the uh, Cannon Fire Department, their blood drive is tomorrow, and you get a, tomorrow. a for the firemen. really, really cool. The firefighters. Uh, yeah, I don't think we is, have any females What are right the now? odds your house is going to catch on fire? I mean, really? Hey, 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 you know, don't I mean, you tempt the universe. Fine. You, somebody should probably provide those firefighters with breakfast that morning, because I heard there was some things that <laughs> them caught one. <laughs> oh, and don't try and steal the fire truck either. Yes, will you please leave the emergency vehicles alone? <laughs> Apparently, this, I know we're idiots, right? Okay, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is like is this Florida man? Is this Florida man? Well, we used to play a game called Florida, Florida or not, but the last two were <laughs> yeah. not in Florida. The so, first one yeah, was in Plano, yeah. Texas. Somebody tried to steal a fire truck. And then the second one just happened up in North Arkansas, Northern Arkansas. While the guys were actually at a scene putting out a fire. Oh, my God. The guy's like, hey, uh, is that my bike over there? And then I guess when the fire department like looked, looked was like, where? And, and then uh, next thing you know, <laughs> dude's whoop, driving whoop. off in a fire yeah. truck. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Please don't take the emergency vehicles. Um, I've never there, understood. There like, are certain things in life I should not have to say. You know, if you ask real nice, they might let you toot the horn. You know, well, and firemen, even, they love that kind of and thing. And even in, like, protests and things, it's like fire fire personnel, like your emergency personnel. Um, I, I heard stories about firemen and e EMS being, like, attacked in certain protests and riots and things and it's like no matter what and even in certain cities that they have to be really careful about their trucks for th reasons just like that and it's like you know when my house is on fire i'm not gonna be that one that when the fire department shows up they're like i remember you no. <laughs> are you no. kidding me hey you're that guy <laughs> i'm gonna be the guy standing there with a uh a uh, pan of smoldering brownies saying, these are for you. I also set the kitchen on fire, but here's your brownies. <laughs> <laughs> Giving the gift of life, as I said, though, only takes a couple of minutes. Now, yes, you can get your blood typed and uh, all of that neat stuff, but one donation can save as many as three lives. Is that right? Yeah, depending. Yeah, so, depending on what you're donating and how much you're able to donate. But it's not just about an emergency need for blood. You know no. I mean? Uh, they... Blood is used in everyday uh, mm -hmm. uh, procedures there at the hospital, right? Yes, and sometimes, especially depending, um, the different people have different antibodies in their bloodstream. And so what happens is that sometimes even if you have a regular blood type, like I'm the most common blood type, it's O positive. And so, um, but sometimes you can have different antibodies that are less common, so it's not in that blood typing but it can make it to where you can't have somebody's blood that has that antibody. Like there's the people I've heard of um, maybe in pregnancy talking about anti-D. 
and so there is just a different thing it's not super common so it's not part of the usual typing but it's part of the typing process if you're going to get blood because if you have that antibody and you get blood that has that antibody that that antigen in it you will you will attack that blood transfusion and so that that type of stuff even though you may have a common blood type you may have one of those different antibodies and that has to be matched specifically to when you give blood and so th even though you may feel like oh i'm o positive there's plenty of people with o positive to donate you don't know when you're going to be that person that has that weird different little anti antibody and because of that you could give blood to some other person that has that same weird little antibody you know, so if you're weird, we especially need you. Yeah, definitely. All right. Um, mm -hmm. One pint, one donation. Save as many as three lives. All right. When tragedy happens, there isn't always time for everybody to rock and roll up their sleeves. All right. right. Maintaining a, a good source right. of, of our blood and a good level of blood donations. Right. It, uh, blood supply, rather is very important for their our community and, and, that, and having that on hand right if there's a trauma they have blood already at the hospital you know it's like that having that ready you know instead of just like you said and of course if there was something larger i'd i know that our community would come together and we could get it done but it's like this is our day-to-day -day stuff we've got to keep it going absolutely and no matter what doc bryce says that needle is not the size of a harpoon <laughs> i can see down the center of it it's more like a shotgun no, I'm kidding. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and, and that's what you've come to expect from Dr. Smith. No, it? it's not I'm that teasing. bad. I hate needles, and I still gave blood. It really doesn't hurt, and it's not going to be bad for you. But I do want to recommend that you follow their instructions. Maybe have a little snack before. Don't go, <laughs> and, snack. and don't go in a rush, because whenever you give blood, it takes your body just a second to recognize that drop in your blood counts because you have a natural drop that makes your body make more blood right and so if if you give blood just sit there for a little bit don't try to rush off because it may be when you stand up in 15 minutes that you feel that change Ooh, and dang. those people there are trained to know what to do and if they give you recommendations you should listen to your health professionals <laughs> I'm a grown man. I don't need, yeah, I don't need no saying. juice. When you're offered a juice box and oatmeal cream pie, you better take it. You know, that's a lot better than the last doctor I went to. I gave blood, and you know what they gave that me in exchange? That was Dr. Pepper. No, no, no. This is a different doctor. This is over there at that place up the street I can't mention because I don't want to point anybody out. But I gave them blood, and you know what they gave me? A cotton ball. Well, that was sweet. That's what I got for giving them you my blood. You didn't donate blood. They you gave just me a took a small ball. blood sample. Oh, no, they that took was blood. In like a couple of vials, we're talking about a pint. Now, now to get a, a, a an oatmeal cookie and uh, or I cream, need, pie I really and, need to show you the the video that I have of him donating blood with the big tears rolling. I had down no tears. <laughs> oh, he was crying was like a crying. little. Girl. I'm sure he was acting. He's an excellent actor. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, that was acting. Was I acting. had to hold his hand. See, it's part of the act. He's <laughs> a, he's like one. Of, what's that called? Method acting. See? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's he's it. really yeah, getting into yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's go with that one. Right? <laughs> All right, and finally, you know, give the gift of life, Cuffs and Hoses, tomorrow, tomorrow 9 to 3 on California. The on fire California station down where? on California. Uh, the one right down station the street. Station 3 by yeah. Timothy Church. Yes, that one. Okay. Used to be near uh, Performance. Oh, near Pace RV. That's yeah, what's right, right, by right the next RV. door. Okay. So, uh, yeah, come on down, give the gift of life. Doc and I will uh, swing by while Doc makes his donation. I cannot give just yet. Because I gave last week, they said I can't give this week. So unless I, you have a doctor's note, so I'll give. Oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Rapidly, the doctor's notes fired uh, actually, away now. Actually, okay. as 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 sick as it sounded like you got last week, I'm not sure if that's a good idea. <laughs> Oh, I was so sick, man. Please. He would have been fine if he wasn't outside with that he Dr. Pepper He would have been milkshake. fine if he had followed the recommendation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got him a Dr. Pepper milkshake make him feel better. No, the Dr. Pepper milkshake was probably a bad idea for another reason. Because he has <laughs> other medications that probably interacted it with that Dr. Pepper so milkshake. Good. It was so okay. good. You should have had some. It was oh, really yeah. Good. I would tell you, it was great. Going down. You, you should ask JJ when we were in drive through and we were having that first sip. I was like, "Oh, Doctor oh, Jerry should be here having some yes. Doctor Pepper milkshake." We we thought about you, yeah. <laughs>
Well, yeah. I don't take medications. And then later that afternoon, that I would really interact. thought about you, too. <laughs> I, so, uh, I don't take medications that would interact <laughs> with the Dr. Pepper milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> Now that we've aired my dirty laundry, let's move right along. Uh, real quick, because we're running long, uh, today is also National Senior Health and Fitness Day. I'm guessing this Day. doesn't mean like the 18 year olds? You, well, no, those seniors? No, <laughs> pro- no. Probably not. No, the geriatric ones. You the know? geriatric seniors. Yeah, okay, the ones like Doc Bryce and myself. So, uh, I'm not geriatric. Uh, yeah, look in the mirror. You know, there was oh. a question about the seniors' health and how do they take care of their health and you just see your doctor once a year if they're a family doctor then you can keep seeing them if they're a pediatrician they probably have some sort of age cut off and you should probably find somebody well, that's I- i'm gonna rat jj out you know what he sneaks in his coffee what geritol Shh. i'm just saying don't be telling them that <laughs> and besides jj doesn't drink coffee he drinks monster energy drinks because they're healthy right dr smith no not at all and you know what Please he stop. pours in that too geritol <laughs> Keep me just regular, a buddy. I'm, I'm telling you, you know. I mean, I Geritol like. is just a multivitamin. I know, but when you go to a concert at our age and people start passing around a thermos of Geritol instead of a, you know, the little It's thing. probably <laughs> smart. It's that probably happened. smart. That happened to me in Hot Springs a couple of weeks ago. We should be passing around a multivitamin to Powerade. <laughs> That's probably smart. <laughs> That's how you know you're getting older is when they're not passing around the little doobie anymore. You know? <laughs> it's, it's a thermos full of Geritol. So well, for, thanks, man. <laughs> for our seniors out there. Pass it on, man. Which is 65 and above. I know that's super young, and that's not fair, but 65 years and older. Dude, that's old. That's not old. <laughs> you Keep speak it up, for yourself. Bryce. You speak for yourself. Keep that's it up, old, Bryce. Man. You know, <laughs> seniors can benefit in numerous ways, though, from physical activity, right? Yeah, and so in general, the first thing I would say that if you're 65 and older, you should have an annual wellness visit and your initial wellness visit is a it's called a welcome to medicare visit and your doctor can do these but you should have once a year where we have a wellness visit and some people get a little confused on that that one is fully covered by insurance if we talk about a problem during that then it's not just wellness but i i like that that visit is a long visit there's a lot of paperwork i don't like all that part of it but it does give me time to sit down and talk to my patients about their individual health their individual health risks updating their things that might have happened in the last year their medications and it gives me a point where we can talk about what can we do to keep you healthy in the future and so there are there's so much i would say taking a multivitamin is really helpful if you're not already taking a multivitamin taking making sure that you have a good fiber the average american if you're a male needs 40 grams of fiber and female needs 30 and the average gets like 12 to 15 so probably taking a fiber supplement or trying to increase your fiber intake in your food can really help keep your bowels healthy and regular because that can be something that we struggle <laughs> with as we age <laughs> Well, we're <laughs> ultra regular on this show. <laughs> regular. Uh, and so, uh, multivitamin, taking, doing some sort of fiber supplement, or trying to make sure you're eating enough fiber. Staying active is super, super important. The actual, if you're trying to prevent heart attack and stroke, that's going to be aerobic activity. That means like running, swimming, you know, all of those types of things. What about yoga? Yoga is not aerobic, but it's still excellent. It's going to be, and we can talk more about the health benefits of that as you age. What about goat yoga? I love it. Let's do it. How about gogurt? Can we do that as like a video? I'd like to video you doing goat yoga. Apparently, it's actually a thing. I bet it would uh, trend on TikTok. Uh, But anywho, so aerobic. So that means that you get your heart rate up. That's really the biggest part of that. So getting up the stairs gets your heart rate up around. Stairs are actually a really good form of aerobic (laughs) exercise. It's way. That's our company health care plan (laughs) right here. That's our gym program right there. It's actually really easy. It's a lot easier to get your heart rate up on an incline. So like when I live in kansas running was much easier <laughs> and now it is not as easy you're not in kansas but, anymore there no. because even a slightest incline but stairs included can really help and and it can be a lower impact because you're not going as fast doing it and it can still get your heart rate up but they say that two miles and 30 minutes is what is actually preventive of heart attack and stroke uh, now other preventive things that's not what exercise it prevents diabetes but the thing that prevents diabetes the best is actually weightlifting exercises we lose muscle mass as we age every year if you're not fighting to keep it you're losing it 
and you don't really realize it until you're having to hold on to the arms of the chair to stand up. If you can't stand up without holding on to the chair, you're already experiencing some form of weakness. So exercising regularly, that, that muscle building exercise can actually help keep your sugars in regulation, increase your metabolism. It, more muscle mass increases your basal metabolism. So it helps prevent diabetes. And then we talk about th- other preventive exercises and yoga is excellent as well as like there's a good Tai Chi place here. There's a yoga instructor here. But those types of things are really focused on balance and mindfulness And that balance is super important because we also lose balance as we age. So I kind of compare people to animals. So I guess it's good we're not on Facebook Live. (laughs) But you you see cows in the field and the calves are like jumping around, acting crazy, right? And the adults just stand there and eat. Yeah, humans are kind of like that. We stop jumping around and so our bodies stop knowing it they lose that balance you know as kids they're in the parking lot trying to balance on different things climbing everywhere right and as adults we just walk along and graze right and so we lose our balance over time and it's not something you realize until you trip a little and you can't correct it and now you've fallen and broken something or having something and you else can't happen. get up See, we've all seen that commercial, okay? (laughs) And so balance training can be super helpful. If you're in a state of health that you're healthy enough to participate in like a yoga program or like Tai Chi, um, that the gym down on Fairview has a Tai Chi, which is really good for balance. I think they also do a silver sneakers class, yeah, too. Yeah, they so, do. You know, they I accept mean, your, if your insurance does silver sneakers, they'll accept silver sneakers down there. But I think all the gyms here will. Okay. But um, you'd have to talk to those gyms to be... 100 percent but i like tai chi yoga because that working on that balance when you start doing those types of programs you'll realize just what you don't have no matter what age you are if you're not used to doing balance exercising you're gonna look real wobbly up there and that's okay your brain can be retrained but it's one of those things if you don't use it you'll lose it and balance it's terrible but the first time you see it i've fallen now i've broke my hand now i've you know and and we we don't recognize it until it's really a problem. Yeah, there was something. There was an underlying issue that caused you to fall. Right. You know that I mean? you had you, a. You you've might been have walking tripped. upright for a long <laughs> time. Okay. You know. Now all of a sudden you can't stay on your feet. And one of the best. So if there were two exercises I could get people to do every single day, adult people, I would, there would be two exercises. One, you are supposed to brush your teeth for two minutes twice a day. All right. So if while you're brushing your teeth, they're in front of that sturdy bathroom counter, right, that for one minute attempt to stand on one foot and for one minute attempt to stand on the other, grabbing onto the counter as needed. I like that one. But now you're practicing for four minutes a day, two minutes each foot, as to being able to stand on one foot. And you'll realize that if you maybe have turned an ankle a couple times, that one's balance isn't as good as the other one. But you don't notice those little things until you start testing them, right? So that one can actually help with your balance. And you'll get to where you can actually stand that whole two minutes on one foot. And you don't know how long you could stand on one foot because your balance improves over time as you challenge it. Um, And then the other thing being that you need to be able to stand from a chair without touching the armrest. All right. If you have to use the armrest, it means that you've had muscle loss in those big butt muscles that you're sitting on. And they're not strong enough to squeeze hard enough to get your body weight out of that chair. So there are exercises you can do that can help improve that. And they don't have to be hard. You don't have to be a CrossFit or a Richard Frawning or whatever. Like, find yourself a tall chair with arms, a sturdy chair, that if you were to fall into it, it would catch you. Put it against the wall, but you need it at a fairly high height, all right? Because what your goal is going to be is to just touch your butt to that chair, not sit, touch, and stand back up. And I you like do doing that. squats. Exactly. But it's a graded squat. Most people can't squat, but it's a combination of weakness and mobility. And as you strengthen those muscles involved in that squat, you'll be surprised how deep your squat can get once you train back into it. But if you're having trouble even rising from a chair, the reason you can't squat isn't just your knees, I promise. It's because you don't have the strength to support your knees and your weight. But that can be trained. So you start with that taller chair, And you squat to 10 if you can. 
touch your butt 10 times. If you can't, do five. Work up to 10. If 10 gets easy, do 30, right? Do 10 three times, right? And once that gets easy and you're, you can just knock out 30 butt touches on that tall bar, bar counter height chair, now you need a regular chair. And now you work back up to 10 and you work back up to 10 three times because you get to that where you're just slowly finding a shorter chair and you'll be amazed at how much when you have the strength in the muscles to do that movement, how much easier those joints move to do that movement because it changes your mobility around strong muscles or flexible muscles or strong muscles. So it's like having that flexibility and that and the strength to support that joint is actually a lot to mobility. So some people feel like it's like, oh, well, I just don't have the mobility to do that. Well, why don't you just start at that first step and see if you can do that one, right? You have the mobility for that and you have the strength for that. So build that up and then max it out and then take the next step, right? Because that's easy. 10 little butt touches to a chair, that's done pretty quick. Right after you stand on one foot brushing your teeth. <laughs> right? You know, that's it. Get a routine and stick with it, though. And don't make that routine crazy. You're not like a no, whole you, different person. You're not Superman, Supergirl. Okay? Well, and just you know, because I mean, you... Just take it at your own pace. Exactly. And, and you know, try not to kill yourself. Or but the best thing to do for your health is the thing you actually complete. Okay, so if standing on one foot is easy, do that. If it's easy to just touch your butt to a chair 10 times right after brushing your teeth, then do that. You have done amazing things for your body and accept where you're at. Some days you're going to be very motivated to take big steps for your health and then get out there, do it, eat that salad, do the squats another 30 times that night. Okay, that's great. You've made big steps today. Some days you don't feel it keep walking take a step you may not feel like going to do push-ups next but now i'm just going to do the squats 10 times there i've done it i've done one step towards my health towards maintaining my body and treating it like the temple it's supposed to be right do a step it doesn't have to be perfect but every day even if it's a small step take that small step what can i do today to be healthier right and some days that step is going to be bigger and some days you may be falling, but try to fall forward, right? Fall towards your goals. <laughs> Not behind. Thank you, Dr. Smith. All right, guys, we have got to get through this top of the hour stuff. It's the roundtable brought to you each and every weekday morning by our friends out at a bunch of places, namely First Choice Family Care. If you Hello. want more from Dr. Smith, you can always check out her Facebook page. She's always doing great things over there. Uh, go to the website. I should do a video on those exercises. Amen. That way you can see kind of what yeah, we're talking you know, about. I mean, uh, maybe we'll get an old geezer to come down and, uh, you know. Yeah, we'll find Doc, an old geezer you, somewhere. You ain't doing nothing, right? Dude, I am not anywhere near 65. So you should message us if you'd like to be a part of our video. Amen to that. All right, guys, we got to get through this top of the hour stuff. We are way out of bounds. Y'all hang out, and we'll be back. Ladies, your name here. News Talk 92 KBEU Bearded. News Talk. For South Arkansas, News Talk 92, KBEU. You had all kinds of warnings that this would be a bad kid, right? All kinds of warnings. Uh, Reuters is reporting uh, some really disturbing writing. Uh, one day, I'm going to quote, one day I was driving.